you mentioned not only education, but health care. That's another big issue here in the Valley. Well, that hit us like a hurricane, just overnight. Uh, we have to slow the train down on that. There's so many unknowns about that. We have health care providers not being compensated properly for what for, for, for their services. And, and of course, the recipients are not, are not receiving the benefits that they need uh, um, uh, in, in the line of uh, uh, health care. And you've actually been reading up on policies, and people have been contacting you, I'm sure, daily. To I've had probably about 30 hours of briefing and probably 30 hours of reading uh, policy. Uh, they're very complex issues, especially I'm, I'm on the health care committee, uh, uh, public health, and uh, it's a huge problem, and it's so, so important that we, we understand what those issues are, but we also make the folks in Austin understand that. All right. Well, congratulations tonight. <laughs> She's very happy for Bobby and that this is not her last time that she's going to be running for office. Live in McAllen, Katie Lopez, Action 40. Back to you. Very excited, Bobby Guetta and oh, yes. friends and relatives and everybody out there right now. The Hidalgo County Drainage Bond Pass is paving the way for improvements to the tune of $185 million. That's right. Well, here's a look at the numbers. 75% of the voters were for the bond, 25% against it. We talked to Judge Ramon Garcia earlier who said in about four months they should start getting the money in and then in six months get the development underway. He also said that the federal government will be reimbursing about half that $185 million and that this was necessary to protect the county against Mother Nature's fury. That's right. Now to the Texas Senate State Senate District 20 race. Yeah, let's take a look right here. Incumbent Juan Chuy Inahosa has beat out Republican challenger Raul Torres. Take a look at the results right there. 60% of the vote going to the incumbent. Action Force by Crenda live in Hidalgo County with more. Texas Senator Juan Chuy Hinojosa, who's won his third term for the Texas Senate. Now, Mr. Hinojosa, you've received, uh, you've won the election by a pretty good margin. What do you credit that support to? Well, uh, first of all, I want to thank my supporters, my um, volunteers, my workers, my family. Uh, it's really an honor and a privilege to get re-elected to the Texas Senate. Uh, we take every campaign seriously. We work hard. And I attribute that for my approach to government. I take a very balanced approach. I deal with issues based on merit and public policy. Uh, and I don't deal with issues on a partisan basis. Now, what do you hope to accomplish over the coming tonight here with the Democrats in Hidalgo County, but what, what do you hope to accomplish in your next term in the Texas Senate? Well, the number one priority is to restore the funds of a cut for public education. Education is the best equalizer we have in society. Education uh, has, has got to be a priority. Uh, number two, I look to, towards working uh, in funding our water plan. Uh, water is so important to our growth here in South Texas and to our state that we need to deal with it. Uh, and thirdly, uh, we need to deal with our transportation needs. And we continue to focus on creating new jobs here in Texas. We lead the state and, uh, and the nation in creation of new jobs here in South Texas because of oil and gas drilling. Uh, so I hope to take a, a, a very active, proactive approach. I still retain the position as vice chair of finance. In addition to that, I was just recently named chair of integral Mental relations. So I will be a key player uh, in some priorities for the next session uh, and our state will continue uh, to prosper. And we're just coming out of a bad recession, as you well know, but our economy continues to grow and expand. So we're doing better in other states and the country. Great. Thank you, Mr. Hinojosa, and congratulations. Yeah. We, did, we, did try and, we did try and reach Raul Torres, his uh, opponent, who is uh, in with his family and supporters in Corpus Christi tonight. We able to reach him, uh, but we wish the very best to uh, Mr. Hinojosa, who did win the District 20 Texas Senate. Reporting for McAllen, I'm Brett Crandall for Action for News. That great. noise can be deafening there, so I feel for Brett right there. Congratulations to the Senator for another term in office. Let's turn now to the U.S. House District 28 race. Mm -hmm. Incumbent Henry Cuellar took on four challengers, but has been projected to come out on top. Top on Cuellar's list this term, focusing on a veterans hospital for the Valley, border security, and international trade. Let's get a look at the numbers right now. 64% going to the incumbent Cuellar. William Hayward, the Republican in the race, with 32.8%. Down there at the bottom, the liberal candidate, 1.9% of the vote. We still got a, um, 
a veterans uh, hospital we got to continue working on. We still got to work on making sure that border security is strong for our area. In fact, if you look at some of the uh, recent FBI figures that uh, came out, it shows that crime has gone down uh, for the border, for the southwest border. So we must be doing something uh, correct. We still need a lot more to go, but uh, we're doing uh, working together uh, across with the state, federal, local folks. And, of course, the other thing is trade uh, is so key. Tourism is so key for our area. All right, we continue with our special campaign coverage, and we remind you we have several ways for you to get your election results on our website, valleycentral.com, our brand new Action for Mobile app, which is free in the iTunes Store and on Google Play. Just search KGBT or across all of our social media platforms. That's right. You can join the conversation right now with us on Twitter. Just use the hashtag RGVote. More places, more coverage, more results. Campaign 2012, expect more right here on Action 4. All right, we have our Action 4 political analysts in-house joining us as they have been all oh, evening for, with their <laughs> insight into the big races across the of valley. Of course, we thank them for that. We love having them around. Action 4's Hannah Lynn is live with them with more on the races tonight. Hannah. That's right, guys. So much excitement here in the Rio Grande Valley, the final hours of this election day, and it, it's just really been crazy. But have there been any sort of upsets that have happened so far in this election process tonight? Not that I can think. I think, uh, you know, at the local level, I think it's, it's interesting to, uh, to see how uh, some of the uh, voting uh, took place, especially in District 41, uh, which was uh, carved out back 12 years ago to be more of a competitive uh, Republican-leaning district. Uh, and of course, uh, it, you know, Bobby Guerra, who obviously was a uh, uh, former Democratic kind of chairman, uh, uh, but obviously uh, from a well-known family and a very conservative family, so, uh, and well-known. So he obviously had quite a, quite a bit of ID. That was, uh, that was something that I, uh, I, I felt was going to, to occur in that district because it's not a Republican district nor a Democratic district. They're very independent voters in that district. So uh, it's interesting how that, uh, that came out tonight. It really is interesting. But there was also a little bit of an upset in Brownsville that we were talking about a little bit earlier. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, well, I think the BISD, uh, the school district race, uh, they had four that had slated together. Um, and it looks like maybe two of them from that slate have um, have come up on top and the other two haven't. So BISD's been, uh, the numbers are, think are still being finalized, but it looks like there might be a little. A little bit of neck and neck. Uh, neck there, right? and neck, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and on a national level, we have some things that are going on. Obama looks like he is on his way to a second term. Of course, we will talk about that a little bit later in the newscast. Back to you guys. Yes, all eyes are on that national spotlight, especially the presidential race. We'll have that in just a moment. Now to the Hidalgo County Sheriff's Race. Incumbent Lupe Trevino taking on Republican challenger Robert Caples. Action 4 is Joey Orta caught up with Lupe Trevino this evening. Take a look at the numbers before we go to him. 80% of the votes going to the incumbent. Not a big surprise. A lot of people in Hidalgo County are saying only 19% of the vote going to Robert Caples. Here's Joey with more. A big celebration here tonight at the Tejas Grill in FAR, where Hidalgo County Sheriff Lupe Trevino says he's not stopping at a third term, which it looks like he's getting now. He's going all the way to a fifth term in office. That's his plan for the long term, at least. He plans to be around for five terms, and he's certainly on his way there tonight, the projected winner going up against Republican challenger Robert Cobbles, a former deputy in the sheriff's office. Cable's not making himself available for interviews tonight, not answering our calls. The sheriff says that Things are getting more serious this time around. Anything that's going to kill us is internal corruption. Because they can be, our, some of our folks can be bought. So if we fight that, then Mexican drug dealer has nobody to buy. And that's how we're keeping that violence on the south of the river. Let me tell you something. I do not debate child molesters or convicted criminals. And if I, want to, if I want to talk about my opponent right now, that means I'm giving him strong relevance and he was ex non-relevant, as you can see. Again, incumbent Sheriff Lupe Trevino moving forward with a third term in office, celebrating a big victory here tonight. We'll have much more on his plans for the future coming up tomorrow morning on Action 4 News Sunrise. For now, in far, Joey Orta, Action 4 News. 
Thanks a lot, Jerry. Uh, yes, the incumbent shared. Now to Cameron County Sheriff race, where incumbent Omar Lucio taking on challenger Jimmy Manrique. Yeah, Action Force Clay Williams spoke with the sheriff tonight. Let's take a look at the numbers. Sheriff Lucio with 66.7% of the votes right there so far. Jimmy Manrique, the Republican challenger with 33% of the votes. Let's find out what Clay has tonight. Valley International Country Club in Brownsville, where the Cameron County Sheriff race is over. And once again, Omar Lucio is the sheriff of Cameron County. After uh, defeating Jimmy Manrique tonight, his Republican challenger, and the sheriff joins me now, Sheriff Lucio, uh, talk a little bit about the big win tonight and, uh, and uh, what it means to you to serve for a fourth term and a third and second one for the citizens of Cameron County. And a congratulations to the sheriff there, fourth term in office. Obviously not the outcome. The challenger, Republican challenger, Jimmy Manrique, had won it, but all along he's been thanking his supporters, saying that he appreciated their efforts and, and what they've done to help his campaign. Right, and Jimmy, this wasn't his first run at bat for sheriff. Switched parties. Who knows, we'll see him, you know, another run after this. Now look at the Willisie County Sheriff's race tonight. Yeah, Larry Spence right there, the incumbent. We'll hold on to his seat once again. So all of the incumbent sheriffs right there in Willisie, Cameron, and Hidalgo County will be staying as the sheriff. And the Cameron County District Attorney's race will fill the seat currently held by Armando Villalobos, Luis Sainz, taking on Chuck Mattingly. Action Force Daisy Martinez live in Brownsville. She has reaction tonight to this race. Daisy. Marcy Ryan, we're here at Winks with the unofficial winner in the district attorney, uh, Cameron County district attorney race, Mr. Luis Science. And although all the precincts have not been reported, he is in the lead with about 20,000 votes. Mr. Science, congratulations. How are you feeling? How are you feeling about this victory? Oh, very, very elated, uh, very, very happy. Uh, at the same time, I recognize the tremendous challenge that I have before me. The voters have spoken loud and clear and they've made their concerns known to me and they want uh, to restore the you know the faith of the judicial system and the DA's house in general and I've accepted the challenge and I will respond accordingly I will meet their expectations today you took a lot of time to actually go out and meet the people face to face you were a hard man to get a hold of but you made it a point to hit a lot of the precincts why was that well, you know, I, I pride myself in having a certain work ethic to just work really hard. I don't ask anybody to do something that I don't do myself, so that's the reason I went to all the polling places and, uh, you know, showed them. I think that, you know, being a true leader is just not giving instructions and directions, it's showing people what you want them to do, and that's what I did. I mean, by myself, just drove all over the county, San Benito, Harlingen, Port Isabel, Las Fresnos, I mean, all, all over the county, all day long. And you have a big challenge up ahead. Cameron County, of course, caught up in the middle of a big FBI investigation. A lot of serious allegations, especially to the top man, the DA, Mr. Villalobos, who you will replace January 1st. How do you restore that trust? 
Well, obviously that's a, a big, big challenge. There's nothing I can say tonight that will restore the trust. Uh, it takes a lot of work, uh, and really just by showing people what I can do in court, and just you know providing the work ethic, the temperament, and just doing the right thing. And that's what I intend to do. I know that they have high expectations, and I will live up to their expectations. So there you have it, the unofficial winner in the Cameron County District Attorney race. Earlier we also talked to the Republican challenger, Mr. Chuck Manningly. He wasn't ready to concede this race, but this is what he told us. During the campaign, we got a feeling that there was a, a, uh, an overwhelming need or want for change. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people were telling us they were with us, and I think that a lot of people still are. And we're just waiting to see what the final results are going to be. All right, thanks to Daisy for that. Now, this election uh, season, social media has certainly taken on a whole new role in gathering support and getting the word out for the candidates. And we've been online as well all day with you guys. Action Force Brianna Vela joins us live from the studio with what you have to say online. Brianna. Thanks, Marcy and Ryan. Yeah, social media has played a huge role in this 2012 election. We even have on our website the election results. We are keeping you up to date, um, time by time, loading in the new feeds of the votes and we have them all right here for you we keep um, updating them for you not only on our website valleycentral.com but on our facebook and twitter page and on twitter we are even putting your tweets live out there for everyone to see on our website you can tweet us at kgbt and put the hashtag pound rgv vote all right. Brianna, thank you for that. And we have people watching our newscast that were streaming live on ValleyCentral.com. Mm -hmm. Clint Clancy from Austin, Texas, saying he's enjoying the newscast tonight with our election oh, coverage. Right. Thanks for listening <laughs> in from Austin, watching us on ValleyCentral.com right now live. In Hidalgo County, the District 39 race for state representative was decided early and by a wide margin. Yeah, Democrat Armando Garza running for a fifth term against Republican candidate Joel de los Santos. Take a look at the numbers right there. Armando Martinez the incumbent with a pretty decisive victory right there. Action Force Joe Bowling with more. With an emphatic statement, the voters in Hidalgo County have made their choice that what they have is what they like. <laughs> incumbent Democrat victorious Armando Martinez will serve for a fifth term as a U.S. representative from the 39th District. Again, it was an emphatic victory, and he talks about going to work immediately. Yeah, absolutely excited that Action 4 News is here with us tonight here in Westlaco and celebrating our victory for another fifth term in the Texas legislature. You know, we've already been at work and, and we've proven ourselves and obviously the people of District 39 have, have, uh, have made their voice heard. Uh, we're going to focus on education, on health care, on, you know, economic development and of course uh, transportation. A lot of the, the issues that are important to District 39, we want to restore the cut the Republicans made of $5.4 billion to education, over $4 billion to health care, restore those funds so that people can get back to work and our kids can get educated. It was a convincing victory. The voters made a statement here tonight. And it's Martinez for another term. Reporting from Hidalgo, the 39th District Representative is Armando Martinez. I'm Joe Bowling for Action 4. Oh, <laughs> I I know, love I the sports guy. Joe love it. Reporting all night. Unofficial results are still coming in for newly created U.S. Representative and District 34. U.S. Representative seat, District 34. There you go. Earlier tonight, Democrat Philemon Vela declared the winner by the Associated Press pretty early in the evening. Check out the numbers right there. With more than 70,000 votes, he garnered 62% of the vote right there. Jessica Puente Bradshaw, his opponent right there. He thanked her during our newscast, one of our cut-ins earlier this evening when he uh, talked about his victory tonight, said that he appreciated her running and thanked his supporters as well. Action Force Veronica Gallego says more. The celebration has begun for Filemon Vela. He's got numerous supporters here that have plenty to smile about tonight. There was a theme amongst this race, and it was all professional, no slander. The hot seat for the newly created Congressional District 34 of Texas is now given the title to Filemon Vela. It's very exciting to win a race like this. The crowd gathered together at Cobblehead's restaurant in Brownsville to receive the news. It's a race of both Filemon Vela and Jessica Puente Bradshaw had similar views on fixing the economy. Uh, bring down our levels of unemployment, do everything we can um, to, to promote the, the port of Browns and the port of Harlingen and everything, all the good that they do. We need to help bring the medical school to South Texas. Um, and we, we need to make sure that we can fix our educational system uh, uh, to 
and to help our superintendents, our principals, our teachers, and our children. Is the economy. You know, what is our economic future going to be like? What kind of jobs can we expect to see come here? You know, the, the whole country is suffering in that regard, but here in the Valley, we suffer from an even higher unemployment rate. But only one gets to act on it while the mood in the room was very relaxed. Filemon Vela says he's concentrated on getting the job done and not letting anyone down in the process. Filemon Vela plans to go to work immediately. He says it's time to make changes in the valley. Reporting from Brownsville, Veronica Gallegos, Action 4 News. And right now, all the major networks, CBS and all the others, breaking news saying Barack Obama re-elected as president of the United States. Again, this is just coming in on Twitter. If you want to find out more, go to our Twitter feed at KGBT, hashtag RGVote. Some big news again coming in about the presidential race, which we've been waiting for all night. Yeah, this one was a close one throughout the evening, but some of those important battleground states did not go Romney's way. We'll have more from our political analysts. They'll talk about this, but it looks like another four years for President Barack Obama a victory, it appears, tonight. Hell? We're giving you another four years here with us, <laughs> too, sir. Oh, We've extended your contract. Right. We voted. We got two points. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, we're talking about a forecast that well, I vote for. Yeah, because it's going to be nice and cool overnight. I could use some rain, though. That is a battleground. Getting rain in the valley these days. We will talk about that coming up in just a bit. We also have some more race numbers for you right there at the bottom of your screen. Keep it tuned. More Action 4 News at 10 after this. Huh? Oh. Well, I suppose. Hold on. All right, we'd like to bring back our Action for Political Analysts to talk about the presidential race. That's right, we're getting the breaking news right now reported by several networks across the, the nation that Barack Obama is the winner in this the election. Big battleground state Ohio right. was called for Obama and that solidify the victory. Absolutely. We've been watching this step by step all night with our action for political analyst Hollis Rutledge, the former Hidalgo County Republican Party Chair. Sylvia Garza Perez is the current Cameron County Democratic Party Chairperson live now with Hannah Lynn. Yeah, and if I can, you guys take a look at the numbers right here. Obviously, uh, that speaks uh, volumes. What do you guys say? Well, I just think that's so interesting. You know, the Valley is very uh, dominantly Democratic. And so what does this mean for the Democratic Party now that President Barack Obama has won a second term in office? It's a great opportunity for the Valley, um, especially with the numbers we've had both in Hidalgo and Cameron County. The, the voter turnout has been tremendous. I'm very excited. Every Democrat in Cameron County looks like they've pretty much clenched their, their victories. And so there's a lot of work to be done to get the vote out, but it's exciting for Cameron County. Hollis? <laughs> Texas well. is a red state, Hollis, you know. Texas <laughs> continues to be a red continues state. To be a red Not state. for yes, long. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's obvious that, uh, you know, we were expecting to do better in Florida, uh, in Ohio. Uh, the momentum was obviously going our way. 
We also were expecting to gain some uh, U.S. Senate seats, and of course that obviously did not transpire uh, this evening. Uh, obviously somewhat disappointed because we, we actually thought we had uh, the momentum our way, especially in some of those swing states. And uh, I guess we'll have to congratulate uh, the, uh, the President and uh, his leadership, I guess, and uh, we'll go on to the next election. That's but, right. But um, Texas is still red. It's still red. Say a little bit of bittersweet feelings right here in the Family Center. Not here. for long. <laughs> <laughs> Not for long, but back to you guys, Ryan and Marcy. I think so. Sylvia's ready saying, to celebrate. Yeah, no, when Hollis <laughs> says, I guess, we got you, Hollis, we got you. <laughs> now to the race for U.S. Representative District 15, incumbent Ruben Hinojosa facing a Republican challenger, Del Brueggemann. Yeah, Del Brueggemann right there. Action 4 is Brett Krendel's live in Hidalgo County with what these numbers mean for the incumbent who holds on to his seat. Brett. Yeah, I'm Brett Crandall, live in McAllen with uh, Congress, U.S. Congressman Ruben Hinojosa, who was just elected to his ninth term in Congress. And we were just talking about the great turnout we've had here in Hidalgo County. Turnout, the higher turnout to be, and the support behind you. Let me say that today is a great day for America, and especially for South Texas, right here in Hidalgo County, because we broke all the records in voter turnout with about 50 percent more than what we had back four years ago. And I think it's because people have found out that by raising those percentages upward, that Austin, our state capital, and Washington, our nation's capital, are going to pay attention that this area is very important and they've got to count on us and we are going to see a much bigger investment in the areas that are so important in our economy, in our small businesses, to create jobs and especially to invest in education, to invest in health care and our infrastructure, improving our roads and bridges. Bridges. All of this to say that quality of life is going to continue to get better for everyone in Deep South Texas. <laughs> president Obama is, is the projected winner. What are you hoping to accomplish with the president over the next term? Well, I want to say that we are lucky that President Obama is going to get four more years because that is going to give self-confidence and improve consumer confidence nationally so that they will want to start in investing in the uh, stock market, investing in, in our country, creating jobs, hiring more people. I am delighted to hear that President Obama is going to get four more years according to CBS and some of the other uh, networks. This is great news for our country, and I want to say that I've enjoyed working with him because he cares a great deal for the middle class and for low-income families to help them get the jobs that they so much deserve. So I am very happy that I will get an opportunity to work with President Obama, and I, serving on the Education Committee, am committed to help reauthorize leave no child behind with improvements as that the uh, superintendents have given us. We are all going to be better off because of what happened today. All over the We did try and contact uh, Mr. Brueggemann, the uh, op opponent to uh, the, um, Congressman Hinojosa, but we were unable to reach him. He is in Seguin tonight uh, with his family and supporters. Well, that's all we have here with the headquarters with the Hidalgo County Democrats here in McAllen. Reporting in McAllen, I'm Brett Crowell for Action Point. Congratulations right. to him. A lot of excited people there. That's right. We're looking out at the forecast now because we didn't forget about you on no, election day. No, because I can deliver. A cold front <laughs> next week? That ought to be good. 87 degrees for the more. Four years. Four more cold us. front. Yeah. And, <laughs> if you, and if you can't, you're out. <laughs> uh, southeast wind at 14 miles an hour. We will talk weather coming up. Here's a look at some of the big races across the valley tonight. We'll be right back with more.
Now, your action forecast from the 24-7 Weather Center. Well, we are talking about a forecast that will be warm and it will be windy as we move on to the end of the week and the weekend. But the promise is that we'll see a cold front, the payoff for Monday. Now, this last cold front this morning, that was, that was so not a cold front. It was, yeah, it was technically, but in terms of reality, it did very little for us. It shaved a couple degrees off the potential high. We ended up not being as close to our record high today as yesterday, but still, we're going to bounce back quick. Southeast winds come back into play real fast, and we end up with the stronger breezes toward the afternoon, or toward the end of the week. 66 degrees at Harlingen, 69 at Brownsville, 67 at Edinburgh. At this hour, clear skies. We should be down near 60 degrees for Harlingen overnight tonight. Here's high pressure, and it's going to keep things, well, mostly cloud-free and keep rain out of the picture. As well, as this high pressure slides east, it's going to be digging in and pulling that southeast wind or pushing it over deep south Texas. And that puts it in a position to flood us with moisture so it'll feel a little bit more humid and hopefully set the stage for potential showers once that front gets here later on early next week. Uh, 55 right now at Waco, 53 at Amarillo. Very nice night across the state of Texas with clear skies. Almost dead calm across much of the state of Texas. A little weak wind there, east three, east northeast, three to seven miles an hour. And again, those winds by tomorrow will be shifting around to out of the southeast. Here's what I'm talking about. Look at future cast. Takes us through the day tomorrow from northeast winds to more of an east wind. And then by evening, southeast breeze. And then go on into Thursday and whoosh, come on in. The southeast breeze picks up in intensity, 15, 20 miles an hour. 15, 25 miles an hour by Friday, 20 to 30 over the weekend, could even be stronger than that on Sunday. All in anticipation of this next frontal boundary coming on down, the leading edge of cooler, drier air. Another cool air mass is going to be coming down across Texas, and that leading edge of it is going to bash into deep south Texas, and hopefully we'll meet a welcoming environment that will allow it to generate showers and thunderstorms early Monday morning, push in some rain, and then move on through and drop temperatures off. I do mean drop them off. Here we go. Look at 90 on Sunday, but 73, 72 for Monday and Tuesday. Yay for us. A little bit warmer for the lower valley on Monday because the front will move through there last, but nonetheless, still in the 70s. And you have that hope for showers for Monday. That's the hope anyway. Sunday night to Monday morning be the best opportunity. Sounds like the real deal for this one. Yeah, just like that uh, one we had the other week, you know, that it's going to bring temperatures down significantly, and hopefully this one will have a better chance for showers. But, you know, I was driving along the other day thinking to myself, we really have missed out. When's the last time I can remember a low in the Bay of Campeche that drove a two or three day rain over the valley? It's been about almost two years wow. since we first moved into our new home over here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a long time. I think of the Bay of Campeche all the time when I'm driving. There you go. I see some stuff in my head. That's why I get tickets it's to weather you're guys. A you're a weather stop signs. You're a weather genius. <laughs> Stay with us. We've got more election results after the break. Uh, okay, I'll run the election ticket from here. All right.
We have a lot of election results to go through, including school board races. A lot of school board races going on tonight. Let's start over for Hidalgo ISD School Board Trustee Place 1. Blanca Lara, the incumbent, with 57.8% of the vote to Victor Peña's 42.2% of the vote. Yeah, Hidalgo ISD Trustee Place 2, Raimundo Rey Martinez, the incumbent, will hold his seat with 57.2% of the votes. And in Hidalgo as well, ISD plays four, 50% of the vote goes to Norma Garza Torres, the incumbent with 49.9% of the a squeaker vote marks. to Mentor Cantu. <laughs> and in place five, also Hidalgo ISD school trustee Rudolfo Rudy Francisco Franz, the incumbent there, holds on to uh, his seat. All of those so close. Ra Rafael Ralph Garza plays six at Hidalgo ISD, 50% uh, of the vote to Carlos Cardoza Sr.'s 49.2% of the vote. They almost look all identical. These seats. Yeah, place seven, the incumbent there, David Badillo, loses out. Yesenia Ayala with 51.3% of the vote. And moving on to Edinburgh, CISD school trustee place four, Robert Benya Jr., the incumbent, with 33.3% of the vote, with 84.8% of the precincts reporting at this hour. Also, uh, moving on to the place six for trustee. Let's take a look at those numbers for Edinburgh CISD. Uh, Carmen Gonzalez is the incumbent in. We move on to place seven now. Jaime Solis, 52.8% of the vote. There we go, Ed couch said now, ISD school trustee, place two. We have uh, Genesis Montalvo with 32% of the vote, right over the incumbent there, Fernando Nano Torres, Jr. Ed couch ISD school board trustee, place three now, Jose Saldivar with 33.7% of the vote. Tony Barco is the incumbent with 29. 29% of the vote, Jorge Peña with 21.5% of the vote in that race for place three. Place four now, also in Ed Calchelsa, Jared Castillo, 33.4%, Juan Rodriguez, 29.3%, and Norfi Leighton Gonzalez, the incumbent at the bottom with 25 point, uh, I didn't get to see that last part, percent there. Mark Lozano over at Ed Calchelsa for place five as well with 37.4%. Yeah, let's move through these quickly. Place six, check it out right here. Uh, Chevy Nava right there, 31.6% of the the vote. He beats out the incumbent Richard Ozunia, the incumbent there with 24.3% of the vote. And Victor Hugo de la Cruz, 39.9% of the vote for place seven at Ed Calchelsa ISD School Board Trustee, 34.5% of the vote going to Mingo Rodriguez, the incumbent, 25.5%, Carlos Castillo. Again, we're going to roll through these quickly. Donna ISD School Trustee, place one, Ernesto Lugo, the incumbent, will hold on with 46.7% of the vote. Let's go on to trustee place two now. Alfredo Lugo, the incumbent, with 65.7% of the vote to Saul Matas, 34.3%. Place three, Mike Flores, the incumbent, 65% of the vote. And on place four for Donna ISD, 45% of the vote goes to Nick Castillo, the incumbent over Rodolfo Rudy Rodriguez Perez, that is, at 34%. Here we go, La Jolla votes. ISD, school trustee place two, J.J. Garza, 61.7% over Mari Gonzalez. And in place four, Jesus Chuy Avendano is 63.4% of the vote over Chico Solis, Chicho Solis. Place five, Esperanza Ochoa, the incumbent, 66.2% over Isaac Sulman, Sulamamana. Sulamana. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> place six for La Jolla ISD, Oscar Coach Salinas, 59.9% of the vote to Irene Garcia, the incumbents, 40% of the vote. We're going to take a quick break and be right back with more election results for you.
Some more school board races, a hotly contested race in Brownsville for the ISD uh, school board seats there. Let's take a look at position three tonight. Otis Powers Jr., 54% of the vote to Argelia Miller's 45% of the vote. Yeah, let's take a look at position number five. Kathy Presas Garcia, the incumbent, 42.4% of the vote there. And moving on to position six for BISD School Board, Minerva Peña, the incumbent, with 67.9% of the vote. And uh, Shirley gets the, the, the lower numbers yeah. here. Yeah, let's move to our friends in La Feria ISD. We have some results for place one right there. Gloria Casas, the incumbent, 62.7% of the vote. Also, LaFerra place two. Alan Moore, the incumbent, gets 60% of the vote over Doug Pearl. And we have more results right after this. That is so funny. Remember, all your election results are on valleycentral.com. We appreciate you choosing us tonight. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye. Nora was saying that some of the western states that support the president, they're still being counted tonight. So it's unclear whether the, the Mitt Romney will have the, uh, the lead at the end of the day in the popular vote, but he does have the lead in the popular